In this presentation, we are covering the sustainable maintenance practices for hard standing surfaces. It's going to be less about the actual physical practices and more about the legislation and the procedures that we should be following to ensure that we're doing the work safely and correctly. First of all, what legal and regulatory requirements may affect us while maintaining hard services? Here, the provision and use of work equipment regulations 1998. This will cover any equipment that we use, so any petrol equipment, any battery powered equipment, any manual equipment uh, used to carry out the task. Posh 2002, this will be so any sort of fuel. Uh, any pesticides that we decide to use, any sort of chemicals to help clean the surfaces. Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, this is a generic sort of everything within the workplace. Manual Handling Regulations 1992, so if we're moving anything manually and physically. Environment Act 2021, um, so the environment around us, are we disturbing any wildlife? What are we doing with our waste? Road Traffic Act 1988. Um, so if we're having to use equipment on the road, does it need to be registered? Do we need license plates, for example? The Wildlife and Countryside Act in 1981. Again, we're thinking of the wildlife. We're thinking of our oh, waste disposals. Health and safety legislation and policies. The importance of health and safety legislation. Health and safety laws ensure the well-being of workers and the public during maintenance activities. They provide guidelines for risk assessments, manual handling and pesticide use and storage. Codes of practice and policies, industry specific codes and organisational policies detail best practices for ensuring safety in maintenance tasks. Adhering to these codes and policies minimises the accidents and injuries. Hazards in the horticultural environment. Common hazards include slips, trips, falls, exposure to chemicals and strain from manual tasks. Identifying these hazards and implementing control measures is essential for worker safety. Environmental and sustainable good practice. Understanding environmental stewardship. Environmental stewardship involves minimising resource consumption reducing waste and preserving biodiversity. Adapting sustainable practices is crucial for the mitigation of the environmental impact of maintenance activities. Contributing to sustainable targets. Governments set targets for carbon reduction and environmental sustainability. Sustainable maintenance practices align with these targets by reducing carbon emissions and conserving resources. Promoting mechanical methods, so mechanical methods such as sweeping, weed removal tools are preferable to chemicals and pesticides. Minimising pesticide use protects the ecosystems and promotes long-term environmental health. Compliance with regulations. Environmental regulations govern pollution control, waste management and chemical handling. Compliance with these regulations is essential for protecting public health and the environment. As you can see here on the right, I've put these two pictures on the screen to identify a couple of potential issues. We can see on the top picture that the person streaming doesn't have his gloves on, which I can guarantee will be advised or required by that particular piece of machinery within the manual. And same for the bottom right, we don't have any sort of spray suits, we don't have any gloves, we don't have any masks. Um, we're not entirely sure what's being sprayed, but it's definitely probably being inhaled by that spray operator on that green. Special care situations, so we need to be considerate of sensitive areas. Some sites may have heritage or environmental significance and require special care. Compliance with the site specific regulations is necessary to avoid any damage to sensitive ecosystems or cultural assets. This could also be things such as working in and around hotels using battery powered equipment when people might be sleeping in those facilities. Compliance with protective rules. If 
following protective rules and regulations preserves the integrity of those special care areas. Proactive measures minimizes disruption and environmental impact in those sensitive locations. So what exactly is a hard standing surface? The definition of a hard standing surface, hard standing means ground surface with a durable material. A hard standing surface can still be porous. So think of things such as pressed resin, but still becomes a hard surface, but allows water to penetrate through the surface to below. Some examples of hard standing surfaces can be pathways, parking areas, spectator areas, and also things like tennis courts um, that can be used for a multitude of different sports, such as futsal as well, for example. Now, I did say we're not going to talk too much about the actual practices, um, but some of the main things that we can be doing are the mechanical practices, the use of powered brushes, uh, manual brushes, jet washing, also, we could then look down the possibility of chemical control if no other means are sufficient. However, they should be used as a complete last resort. Uh, so brushing, for example, regular sweeping to remove debris, dirt and leaves. Weed removal, you may need to do this manually or use mechanical tools instead of chemical herbicides. Leaf removal, so using leaf blowers, brakes to gather leaves, uh, then you can use that to create compost or dispose of correctly. Debris management, regular inspections and removal of litter to prevent blockages and hazards. Planning for suitable maintenance. Now this goes further than just IPNs and maintenance plans. This can be the actual planning stages of creating areas. Uh, for example, there's been many studies done where creating corners and car parks where debris is allowed to collect is obviously uh, an issue. However, if you remove that corner and have a uh, curved corner, the debris will not collect in those areas, reducing a potential job uh, for someone to go have to clean those areas. But also then if the debris isn't building up, weeds aren't being created um, and that debris will then go to another area. So simple little things like that will help the long term maintenance of a particular area. Schedule regular inspections, so identifying those maintenance needs before they become major issues. Implement integrated pest management plans, so the focus on prevention, monitoring and non-chemical control methods. Use of permeable surfaces, so this is earlier on when I mentioned surfaces which allow water to penetrate, uh, reducing runoff and erosions. Proper drainage, ensuring effective drainage to prevent water stagnation. And finally, before we do go, I do recommend you check out our sponsors, Kirsten. They have a range of equipment which can be used in a sustainable manner to remove debris, weeds and reduce the need for pesticides. Links are on the screen and below.